Hi, fourth grade. Happy Wednesday. Today we are talking about one of my favorite things. I've mentioned this before. And um, it is my day to dork out, um, as I wrote up there. Uh, it is, this is one of my favorite types of poetry. No, it is my favorite type of poetry. And um, because I like what they are, I like what they do. Um, they're very fun to write, um, just as an exercise. And I think you guys will have fun with it, too. I want you guys to have fun with it. Um, but basically we get to celebrate something, we get to praise something, uh, or a person or a place or an idea, and, um, it's just fun. So your admit slip for today is I want you to write three to five sentences on the three Imagist poems that you've read, which was the, we looked at Moon in class. We looked at, this is just to say as homework. Um, we were looked at in the metro station, in the station at the metro. Um, so those three very short uh, image-based poems, I want to know if you like the form, um, and yes or no. That's it. Uh, just a little admit slip on that. If you can turn that in to me, that'd be great. So let's get started on the ode. Party time for Miss Joyner. Go back. So, um, like most things that we love, this came from the Greek. The the Greeks. Um, it came from the Greek word. Um, I I wouldn't know how to pronounce it. Um, because I'm not a classicist and I I I did not take ancient Greek. Um, but it means to sing or chant in Greek. Um, so these were originally performed. Um. And so they have um, an air of theatricalness uh, to them, which I think is one of the reasons I like them so much. Um, so when we're looking at an ode, like I'm, it's early in the morning, guys. I am pressing every possible button other than the one I need to. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so an ode is a form of poetry. Like I said, it's like a sonnet or a free verse or anything like that. Um, and it's very lyrical. Um, we're, we're using beautiful language to praise something. Um, it's written in appreciation of something. So if it's a person, a lot of times they're, you know, they're about a person. Um, they're about a thing. Like we'll, we'll read one called Ode to My Shoes. Um, Pablo Neruda a really famous one called Ode to My Socks. Um, or an idea like John Keats's Ode to Melancholy or Ode to Beauty, um, where they wax poetic about how they love beauty, you know, and why it's so wonderful. Um, and the tone can be formal, and, and, the, and the language is usually, especially in the traditional ones, they're very lofty. You know, we've got this beautiful language, and it's just so high-minded. Um, and sometimes it even is that way, even if the subject matter is not something that you would consider lofty. We're going to look at one called um, Ode to the Large Tuna in the Market. I don't know if I'm if I got the, the title right. We'll see it in just a second by Pablo Neruda. And um, the guy's talking about a fish in a market, but he's using the grandest terms possible. And it's just so beautiful. Um, I mean, no better way to go out than by a Pablo Neruda, Neruda ode, um, being a fish in a market, you know. Um, and one of the quotes I found online was that it's, you know, emotional rip currents run through this ancient form of self-expression, which in itself is a lofty way to say that it's a super emotional form. You get to be really emotional about something, which I'm an emotional person, so I think that's why I like it so much. So there's three types. Um, you're not going to have to write two of them. We're, um, but we're going to talk about them just so you know that they exist. Um, you might have to one day. Um, <clears throat> but I know you will definitely study the other two um, when you're in high school. There, uh, but the three types are uh, Pindaric, Horatian, and Irregular. So um, the Pindaric is the one that is named after Pindar, um, who is sometimes described as the greatest lyrical poet. Um, 
It has three sections, a strophe, an antistrophe, and an epode. Um, but uh, the, the strophe and the antistrophe are kind of have the same meter uh, together and the, they have like repeated lines. The strophe has repeated lines um, and the epode will be different. It's like a different section and it has different meter and length. Um, and my, excuse me, sorry, my, my allergies, you know? Um, my favorite, one of my favorite poems in all of the land is a Pindaric Ode, and it's by Williams Word, William Wordsworth, um, and this is just a section of it, um, and it's called Ode to Intimations of Immortality from Recollections of Early Childhood. I mean, who doesn't love that title? Um, I wrote a paper on this once, and, um, you know, we went through the Ars Poetica poem and destroyed it line by line to be able to understand it. And this is one of those poems that you could spend an eternity doing that. It's, um, I mean, the thing has got layers uh, and it is, the language in it is just stunning. So I'm going to read this really quickly just to give you an idea of how it sounds. Um, and then we'll look at the next one. So there was a time when meadow, grove, and stream, the earth and every common sight to me did seem appareled in celestial light the glory and the freshness of a dream. It is not now as it hath been of yore, wheresoe'er I may, by night or day, the things which I have seen, I can now see no more. I can now see no more, not seen. <laughs> if you look down here, 520, the old noggin, you know? Um, so this poem is about, you know, what you know as a child just as being born and 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 what you have in your in your soul and as you get older the things that you lose um a little bit of the wonder um that ability to touch the other realm of um uh the other the other realm the magic you know it's about losing your magic and 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 the people that keep their magic or tend to be the artists and the poets. Um, but the, if you, you know, it's a, it's a little much for you guys in fourth grade. Um, but when you get older, I'm telling you, you got to check this poem out. It's, it's delicious. Okay. So the Horatian Ode is named after a Roman poet, Horace. Um, and these aren't necessarily for performance where like the Pindaric Ode has that a little bit more of that theatricalness because and it's got a stricter structure um uh, this was not necessarily meant to be sung and um and they tend to be more intimate um and sometimes their subjects are simpler and not as lofty you know the subject matter you know um and their images tend to be a little bit more sensory so um the usually the stanzas will have like a, a, a pattern of two to four lines in length and they'll have a rhyme scheme so you know it does have a structure like the first one but it's just a little bit looser okay um it's the fun uncle if you will um so uh this poem is by alan tate called ode to the confederate dead um Row after row with strict impunity, the headstones yield their names to the element, the wind whirs without recollection, in the riven trout tra, in the riven tra, tra <laughs> y'all. I'm so sorry. In the riven troughs the splayed leaves, pile up of nature, the casual sacrament to the seasonal eternity of death. Then driven by the fierce scrutiny of heaven to their election in the vast breath. So see, we still have um, death and breath. Um, and we're, I mean, this is actually, this subject is pretty dense. I mean, he's talking about the fallen dead of the Civil War. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely not as, um, but it's, it's a heavy subject matter, but that was the example that I found um, that was easily understandable. So um, the irregular ode, this is gonna be your jam, okay? Um, this form is the same in tone. We still get to celebrate something, um, but it doesn't have a formal rhyme scheme. It doesn't have a certain number of letters. Um, the lack of rules can give the poet the ability to explore the concepts without really worrying about the requirements. Um, and it has its own 
its own meter, its own length, each stanza, it's, it's its own thing. It doesn't have to match the other one, whereas in the first one, the first two have to match. Um, so um, one of the most famous um, is, uh, is a Percy Shelley poem called Ode to the West Wind. And um, this is just a little piece and um, it's so beautiful. I mean, like the, the thing that these three um, poems have in common are um, the just really beautiful language. Um, so uh, scatter as if from unextinguished hearth, ashes and sparks, my words among mankind. Be through my lips to unawakened earth, the trumpet of a prophecy. O oh, wind, if winter comes, then spring be far behind. And of course, it's a beautiful sentiment about um, the sleepiness of the earth and the coldness of the winter and knowing that, you know, it may be cruel, but we know, you know, the thing that follows winter is spring. So um, just like the thing that follows the pandemic is being able to get out and visit with our friends, you know, that, that way. It will, this too shall pass. So we are going to focus on the irregular odes, and I'm going to focus on being able to make my computer work. Um, the main thing to remember when you are deciding about what you're going to write about is that um, you, the ode praises something. We celebrate something, big or small, doesn't matter, ordinary or high-minded, it's just celebratory, okay? And we are going to use all of our best words. We're going to pull out all those 25 cent words that we have heard or that we find in the thesaurus or whatever. We're, we're using them in this. This is the time. Um, we are going to be as lofty as possible. And we're going to be as, as emotional as possible. We are going to think about the heart-wrenching reasons why we love something, the, all the wonderful things that, you know, whatever our subject is, does to us, uh, makes us feel. We are emotional creatures while we write odes, okay? And you're going to think about your subject, whether it's person, place, thing, or idea, from every angle. So you, you have to explore it um, on all the different levels that we talked about yesterday, where we talk about the mechanics of it, where we... Um, we think about what we can do um, um, as far as making the images happen or the punctuation. Like the, we, we do, we do all the steps for mechanics, but we're also thinking about it from every angle. Like you would take a picture from different places. You know, like we get this side and we get this side and then we get this side and we think, how do people know this? Um, how can it be used? Um, what does it look like from a child's perspective? What does it look like from an old lady's perspective? What does it look like from a dog's perspective? I mean, like really <clears throat> examine your subject and think about all the different things that it can do and the reason that you love it, okay? Attach those emotions to it. So this is a fun poem by Max Mendelssohn that I'm gonna read that's an example of an ode. Ode to Marbles. I love the sound of marbles scattered on the worn wooden floor, like children running away in a game of hide and seek. I love the sight of white marbles, blue marbles, green marbles, black, new marbles, old marbles, iridescent marbles, with glass ribboned swirls dancing round and round. I love the feel of marbles, cool, smooth, rolling freely in my palm, like smooth sided stars that light up the worn world. And I have put here, this poem is literally about marbles. He wrote a poem dedicated to marbles and why he loves them. Odes are the best because <laughs> this is just my sense of humor, but it's so ridiculous and I love it. Like I, you know, I'm the kind of person that if I find a piece of music or a TV show that I love, you know, like, sign me up as being a fan, you know? Um, I've, I've talked to Franklin's mom about um, my love for Doctor Who. Now, she is an OG fan. Uh, she has watched it, I think, since she was a kid, and she knows all the old ones. Um, but Doctor Who is one of those shows that um, 
you know, it's just, it's so fun to be a fan of. It's a really fun show. And things like that, pieces of music, things that you find on TV that are fun, like being in the fandom, you know, like I'm one of the first pe people that are like, oh, I'll do it. I want to, I want to geek out about this. And, you know, this is just one of those things that this is an ode or an excuse to geek out about something. And I mean, like I could write an ode to Doctor Who and I might actually do that. It might be fun and a fun ex exercise for me. Um, but things like that, you know, um, where, um, you know, if you, if, you know, th this, this guy, he may love marbles because they have a really wonderful childhood connotation to him. He may have played marbles with his grandmother when he would visit on the weekends or something, and he would sit on her floor and she may have had a giant collection. And so he would sit and play with them and she taught him how to play the game. You know, there's a million reasons why the kid would, is a fan of marbles. But it's ridiculous that there's a poem written about him, and that's why I think it's so fun, and that's why um, I've kind of jokingly talked about how this is my favorite um, form of poetry. I just love it. It's. I promise I'll stop taking saying that. Okay, this one. It's a two pager. <laughs> there we go. Um, this is the one I was talking about earlier. It's called "Ode to a Large Tuna in the Market." Okay, Pablo Neruda is a magical man. Uh, he was a magical man. Um, he is no longer with us. Um, Chilean poet. Um, <clears throat> very important South American man, both uh, politically and um, poetically. And his poems are just as dripping with emotion and imagery as you can possibly get. Um, a lot of them are, are, are a little old for you. Um, but I'm telling you, you got to check him out. He is a master, absolute master. And this one is about a large tuna in a market. So I'm going to read this to you. And, uh, so Ode to a Large Tuna in the Market by Pablo Neruda. Here among the market vegetables, this torpedo from the ocean depths, a mission, a missile that swam now lying in front of me dead. Surrounded by the earth's green froth, these lettuces, bunches of carrots, only you live through the sea's twa twave. Twave? Survive the unknown, the unfathomable darkness, the depths of the sea, the great abyss, le grand abyme. Only you, varnished, pitched black witness <clears throat> to that deepest night. And the great abyss is the grand abyme. Only you, Dark bullet barreled from the depths, carrying only your one wound, but resurgent, always renewed, locked into the current, fins fletched like wings in the torrent in the coursing of the underwater dark, like a grieving arrow, sea javelin, a nerveless dead in front of me, catafalked king of my own ocean. Once, ha once sappy as a sprung fur in the green turmoil, once seed to sea quake, tidal wave, now simply dead remains. In the whole market, yours was the only shape left with purpose or direction. In this jumbled ruin of nature, you are a solitary man of war among these frail vegetables. Your flanks and prow black and slippery as if you were still a well-oiled ship of the wind the only true machine of the sea, unflawed, undefiled, navigating now the waters of death. I have to laugh. It's, 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 it's so, you know. So, um, Califoc King, a decorated wooden framework supporting the coffin of a distinguished person during a funeral or while lying in state. So he's likening this tuna in the market dead in front of him like a califox king so if you can imagine it's like he's got his coffin but it, instead it's like vegetables and ice and you know he's laying there in the market but he's he's like a a, a king put on display um that has passed away now y'all he wrote a, a note about a dead fish in a market Swingers are the best he made it sound so unbelievably good and lovely. Um, I mean, what better tribute to a gorgeous dead fish 
in a market than an ode. And um, I mean, he described the fish so well. Um, what, how he was in real life when he was alive, how he was what after he had gone and he was laying there in the stately repose of a dead king. You know, I mean, like you can picture that fish in the market and you can picture him swimming around like a torpedo in in the water. And um, it's a poem about a dead fish in a market. Delightful. I'm telling you. It is delightful. So your exit slip is I want just a list from you about 10 things you can write an ode about. Doesn't matter if it's like, you know, marbles or shoes, or if you want to go the lofty route and say like grief or transcendentalism or insert grand thought here. Just give me a list of 10 things that you could write a poem about that you could celebrate and send it to me. Um, do you, do you like that I have my fish here? Oh, it's so early. So your homework is to do your admit and exit slips. I want you to dissect this worksheet called Ode to My Shoes um, by Francisco Alacon, uh, Alacon, I believe, um, and then write a learning log for it. Um, and when you do your learning log, if, um, you know, I want you to write about your poem that you, you know, what you've learned. I want you to kind of think about I mean, you can give me your opinion about it. You can write about the questions you still have. You can do a little summary um, and give me what you think it means. Um, or if you want to talk about anything that we talk about in the lecture videos, you can do that too. Um, so uh, I just want you to write about what you're learning and when you're doing poetry. Um, that's all. The learning logs are to help you process. Um, all the stuff that we go over, we're, you know, we're going over some some new things to you guys. Um, so it's just a way of doing a reading response. And these are my work cited folks. So um, this is the last video journal uh, lecture thing for the week. Uh, tomorrow, you guys will just find Joy Harjo's um, Perhaps the World Ends Here, one of my favorite poems. Um, and you'll just, um, it, it'll be on the left side of the topics page, and it'll also be attached to the assignment itself. Um, so I've, I've tried to make them easy for you to find, but it'll just link to it. So follow the link and it'll take you to the poem. Um, and then I want you to write a reading response about it. I'm on the things that I put on the assignment sheet. And um, it's, uh, and then, you know, we still have a weekly assignment. And then I want you to write your own ode. Um, and that'll be, you know, take the weekend to do it or just to think about it. If you need more time, it's fine. It's a little bit grander of a poem that I'm asking you to write than the others. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. <coughs> I'm telling you, my allergies, the pollen's getting to me. Um, but I want you to enjoy this process. I want this poetry unit to be fun. Um, I also want you to enjoy writing an ode because I really do think that it's, I mean, you could write an ode to video games. I mean, you could write an ode to Fortnite or Roblox. <laughs> but in that poem, you tell me all the reasons that you think it's worthy of a poem. You know, you get to hang out with your friends and just, but give me, you know, examine it from every angle and give me your insight into it. Um, it may be you want to write one about somebody in your family. You know, if you feel really emotional about, you know, your grandmother and, and you think she needs a tribute and an ode, take it seriously and do it. Like, I think this is a really fun exercise. If you, um, you know, if you love your pet um, or if you, you know, you know, so it, you know, it, they, they can be as celebratory as possible. Um, but also if you um, lost someone or something, um, you know, a pet or, or somebody in your family, they can also be used to write a poem about celebrating them because you miss them. And not in an elegy way, not in a, um, not in a grief stricken way, because that's a whole nother can of worms, but in a lifting up way. 
um, people use them for that. They, you know, they've oftentimes been used after people's passing um, to write about why they were so wonderful. Um, or dogs, you know, like there's, I think there's been a lot written about dogs because people love their dogs, you know? Um, but just enjoy the process. Enjoy the, um, and be silly if you want. Just be high-minded about it, right? Use, use all your, use all your language. So, um, as always, if you guys need me for anything, reach out. Let me know what I can do. I'll be here. So, have a great Wednesday.